a classic case of 2D motion is your projectile motion. It's actually the same thing as the falling motion we did in the last chapter, except now we're also going sideways while we're going up and down. Again, physics textbooks tend to gravitate <clears throat> toward these kind of questions because the only acceleration involved is the constant acceleration due to gravity, which is always 9.80 downwards. Given the constant acceleration, the problems tend to be quite simple to analyze, and therefore it's a good way to introduce how to deal with uh, 2D motion. So let's get started. In this case, just to do a quick drawing here to get a sense of what's going on, we have a projectile that is launched at ground level. You have a little cannon here, which is, I guess, small because we always assume it's small. So it's got some kind of initial speed, V0 of 50 meters per second, at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. So that's at time equals zero when it was launched. And then a little later, at time equals three seconds, as you know by now, it kind of follows a parabolic path. And then at three seconds, it hits some kind of target over here. And we're interested in what is my Y position at that point and what is my X position when it hits the target at three seconds. So those are my two unknowns, essentially. And I guess the assumption here is, as we often make, that we have already defined x to be horizontal towards the direction that you're shooting at, and then we put y positive upwards. And of course, we know through this whole time, the acceleration that is at play here is only the acceleration due to gravity, denoted by little g. It's going downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. Being a 2D motion problem, again, the approach is to split it up into your two orthogonal axes, x and y, and treat them separately. Recalling from kinematics that we did in the last chapter, we have this equation. The position of some time later is equal to the original position plus the original speed times technically some kind of delta time plus one half a delta time squared. We'll drop the delta because the t is starting at zero here. And then we have to just rewrite this equation in terms of x and then in terms of y and then filling in what we know and what we don't know. So for the x, let's use x instead of d and it's x3 because it's x at 3 seconds plus x at 0 second plus the original speed in the x. That's where subscript starts to really count because we have multiple speeds now plus one half a also in the x times t squared. Similarly, for the y, we have y0 plus v0 y times t plus 1 half a y t squared. In both of these equations, time is the same, but everything else is different, and they are independent. What kind of information can we fill in? Well, we can say that x0 is equal to 0. We can define that. We can define y0 to be 0 for projectile motion kind of question because the projectile is not touching anything else as it flies through the air. So it's only affected by gravity. So the sideways acceleration is also 0. So we have that. Ay, we already talked about being downwards as y is positive upwards. This will have to be defined as negative 9.80 meters per second squared. And then we also need to know VOX and VOY. Let's get a little more space here. Again, the uh, decomposition, we've done this before. So we have a VO at some direction with some magnitude, which is 50 meters per second. And we want to decompose that into some kind of horizontal velocity and vertical velocity, all these are vectors, of course. So this again is in a right angle triangle, all these magnitudes here, and we have opposite over here and adjacent over there. We know for my x being the adjacent would be VO cosine of 30, and then this is 
in the opposite would have to do with the sine of 30. So now that we have all these information, let's sub it in and get our answers. Or the x position at 3 seconds, we sub in everything. x0 was 0 plus v0 cosine 30, that's my v0 x times my t plus 0 again because ax is 0. So that's nice and simple. We have 50 meters per second, cosine 30, and the time that has passed between 0 and 3 seconds is 3 seconds, cross cross, you end up with meters, calculator work gets you that, and in terms of proper sig fix, let's use 130 meters. Then for my y, Again, y naught is 0 plus v naught sine 30 degrees times time plus 1 half a y t square. Getting a little more space. It's equal to 15 meters per second sine 30 times 3 plus 1 half negative 9.80 meters per second square times 3 second all square units those cancel out and we end up with meters once again giving us 75 meters over here mine plus a negative 44.1 meters giving us 13.9 meters so to answer the question the x and y distance is 130 meter and 30.9 meters respectively. Not too heavy duty as long as you pay attention to which numbers corresponds to your x and which numbers corresponds to your y.